It's from the movie Active Valor, which starred actual Navy SEALs, America's most elite and secret fighters, the men who, of course, took out Osama bin Laden. Joining me now is Rourke Denver. He trains the SEALs and has written a book about them, Damn Few, Making the Modern SEAL Warrior. Welcome to you, Mr. Denver. Thank you, sir. I appreciate you having me, Pierce. There's a lot going on at the moment, which I think comes into your sphere. I want to try and get through these quite quickly. Please. First of all, have you seen the film Zero Dark Thirty? I have. What is your take on it? How realistic is it? Because I found it utterly compelling, but was it realistic? You know, I think uh, Catherine Bigelow makes great movies. I think you feel present. I think they're well I made, and I love the cinematography. Wrong. The tactics of the, the SEAL component of the this movie uh, were strong. I don't think they were perfect. I think it's very it's hard to else. do that, but I think it pays uh, homage to the folks that do d deserve credit in that operation, and that's the CIA and Intel folks that really helped failing. find the target. When SEALs know where a target is and we can fix them to a point, uh, that part of our job, actually executing the mission, is, is what we do and what we excel at. So uh, it really paid great attention. I thought to the folks that deserve the credit. I know that traditionally the SEALs abhor any kind of publicity for the same reason the SAS do back in, in my country, because it doesn't really help anyone to be mm -hmm. publicising what they do and how they do it. How do you feel about the fact that we're seeing a lot of glamorization, if you like, of the SEALs, a lot of books coming out, there's a big Esquire profile of the man who claimed to be the guy that shot bin Laden and so on. How helpful is that in reality to the SEALs and their operations? I think we'll have to see long term what what effect or impact it will have on our capacity for work and our ability to execute our missions. I haven't seen anything that's put us in harm's way, tactics revealed that could cause uh, teammates and brothers in our uh, community to be in harm's way on target. Uh, most of what you've seen has been a narrative on uh, individual missions and capabilities, which I think uh, the public has at least a sense of what we do and accomplish on a battlefield. And so uh, I haven't seen negative results yet, but uh, the, the story will continue and we'll, we'll see where it goes. Now, you were a, a very experienced uh, soldier yourself, Lieutenant Commander, Platoon Commander, training lead, leader for 14 years. You led 200 commando missions, getting a Bronze Star for Valor. Um, what do you think of the gun control debate? Because it seems to be centred right now on whether military-style weapons have any place in civilian hands. What is your view? You know, it, it's, it's, it's a challenging issue. I mean, I think as a, as a SEAL, we utilize weapons uh, of those nature, you know, tactical weapons and the most advanced West weapon systems in the, in the U.S. arsenal as tools of the trade. They're one of many tools we leverage for success on the battlefield. So as a, as a soldier, as a warrior, uh, the use of those weapons are, are fundamental to who we are. Um, as, as, a, as a citizen, as a, as a husband, as a father, um, the conversation is interesting. I believe in our, our Second Amendment rights. I, 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 as I look at the conversation and the dialogue that, that exists now, um, I, I don't believe the, the weapons are frankly the issue. I, I don't think any more than you would use your car to run down a, a bunch of kids standing on the side of the road would you use any type of weapon to uh, execute these atrocious events that we've seen of recent. So I, I think it's more of a mental health issue and, and looking at the, the nuance of that than, than the guns themselves. You see, but when people throw the car analogy at me, I say, well, hang on, because cars are incredibly highly regulated in America. Mm -hmm. I mean, the drink driving death rate has absolutely plummeted since they brought in tough laws around that, for example. You have to have insurance and liability and mm -hmm. so on and so on. So they are very well regulated. What is wrong ideologically with guns being regulated the same way? Well, there are regulations on guns, and it, you know, state by state, that that, that changes and affected. But I, I do think they are a tool, and, a, and an infinitesimally small number of people that are using them for the wrong purpose in their hands, they're dangerous. But I don't think uh, the bulk of gun owners are are, are doing inappropriate or, or um, uh, the wrong thing with those weapons, and 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 the regulations, you know, are what they are. But do you really believe? And I I, I totally respect the Second Amendment. I sort of agree with Joe Biden today that. You can pretty well defend yourself in America with a shotgun. You don't need to have these AR-15 assault rifles, which I use myself to try and show people that I had used one. Mm -hmm. And I couldn't believe the power. We've got a, a clip, actually, of me using this. Let me play this again just to remind people. If you want to protect yourself, get a double-barrel shotgun. Have the shells, a 12-gauge shotgun. You don't need an AR-15. It's harder to aim, it's harder to use, and in fact, you don't need 30 rounds to protect yourself. Buy a shotgun. 
Sorry, that was a clip of, of Joe Biden, not me firing it. But the point I was going to make was, having fired one, I could see that, you know, these can fire up to 100 bullets a minute in the right hands. You, you could certainly get that kind of capacity out of it. I don't understand why people need them. And I don't understand the argument that the answer to America's uh, seemingly out of control gun crime is simply to flood the streets with more guns. I, again, as, as I look at the issue, I, I really see, see the, the weapons, the guns, as, as, as a tool within that, that conversation. And, and again, in, in SEAL training and what we use uh, on the battlefield and how we use them, they're advanced versions of those weapon systems, and we use them with tremendous care and capacity and focus and, and do so uh, guided by principles that we believe in. Uh, I, I think the debate uh, does not come down to the specific use of that tool and, and, and the details of what that weapon's capable of. And, and if you look at the vice president's comments, I, I do think you know, there are shotgun uh, configurations that shoot multiple rounds as well. It, it just really becomes a tool. And as I look at that topic, I, I feel the conversation more drifts towards uh, dealing with the individual that could wield a weapon um, in a negative light. I mean, we found on the battlefield, one thing that I, I write about in Damn Few is that, you know, evil finds a way, uh, bad finds a way. And so if, if the guns weren't in the system, I, I, I sincerely believe those uh, mentally unstable or unhealthy people would find a way to perpetrate heinous acts. So uh, to me, the, the, the guns themselves, the tools themselves are not the issue. It, it's, the, um, it's the mental health status and, and the people that will use them. So that, that, that's my concern. I mean, there are many countries around the world, though, that have a lot of people with mental health issues, that have bad, evil people with evil intent. Britain, Germany, Australia, Tokyo. The difference is they don't have the guns. They can't get access to them. Criminals in places like Britain can't get their hands on guns. And that is why the gun crime rate is so low. And when I speak to people like yourself, I have such huge respect for the service you've given. You know, my, you. Many members of my family have served in the British Army. I, a total respect. I totally understand why you would need these weapons, I appreciate particularly that. with the high capacity magazines and so on, on battlefields in Iraq and Afghanistan and whatever. I just don't get, and I'm not hearing a coherent argument, why they should be so easily available to the likes of Adam Lanza and the killer at Aurora to just walk into Walmart and take one off a wall. Mm -hmm. I, again, as I look at the places that I've traveled in the world, and, and I'm with you in that I've traveled to a, a large number of countries in the world, and a lot of the most dangerous places in the world, and, and, and a lot of those places are spots where you're, uh, the, the civilian populace in the nation isn't armed, and, and, and they're they're challenging dangerous places and, and, and they're ugly in many ways. So um, I, I really believe that the conversation goes beyond the, the individual tool and, and that it gets into other parts of the discussion. And I think as the discussion unfolds, we just need to take our time and, and really look at results-based uh, impact to, to make good decisions. Well, Deva, thank you very much for joining me. Thanks for having me.